let's make it count. We're going to look at true crime and we're going to look at it in three ways. One, what does the Bible say about these crimes? What kind of sin is it? The second thing we're going to look at is, hmm, the mental health community. The psychiatrist, the psychologist, the sociologist, how are they going to make an impact in the case? The next thing we're going to look at is the law of the land. Remember, in the United States, you're innocent until proven guilty. Now, let, today's topic is Nikki Whitehead. Nikki Whitehead is from Conyers, Georgia, Rockdale County, a beautiful place. They lived in a beautiful area. However, she brought some challenges home that did not go well for her. Now, Nikki what Whitehead was raised by her grandmother and her mo own mother launched her life away from Nikki while the great grandmother raised her. Now the great grandmother had Nikki's children. Now Nikki was out there wilding at 16, doing what 16 years old want to do, explore, 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 explore boyfriends, explore weed, marijuana, Explore, it just explored. And next thing you know, she's pregnant. Wow. But she didn't, she didn't scrape them out or do any abortion. She had those babies. Two. She had twins. Beautiful. Two beautiful girl. Well, now she knew I gotta provide for them. They're so beautiful. They're so beautiful. I've gotta provide for them. So she starts a new leaf in her life. She starts to do what? Get her act together, go to school. She graduated with her cosmetology degree. Guess what happened after that? She kept working and moving up the corporate ladder. Why? Because she wanted more for her twins, wanted more for her life. She's not 16 running around anymore, not listening, and had to pay the hard, hard price. So she finishes cosmetology school, opens her own. Mmm, she's doing good. She's doing good. Now, guess what? She can go and say to the courts, I'd like my children. Hmm, it didn't happen automatically. Kind of turned her down. I put everything in place. This should have worked. Mmm. The great grandmother still has the babies and she's trying. So she goes to her mom. Now, remember, her mom gave her to the great grandmother when she was young as well, so she can get her life together. So she gets in touch with her mom, I need help. I really need your support. And her mom says, sure, no problem. I want you to be with your children. You did great. Look at what you've accomplished. We'll do this together. So they started working together. Mental health team came in. Family mental health came in. And what happened? They started working with the family started working with the family to bring things together, to bring them together. Guess what? It works. She goes back to court. She gets the babies. They get to come home. Isn't that wonderful? Everyone under the same roof. The struggles, those, those odd steps that she took as a young woman. But she never killed the baby. She kept them. She kept them. And she put them in a safe place. Her great-grandmother. Why? Because that great-grandmother also raised her. Now the battle was on. The great grandmother was enjoying her, her company. She liked her company. She liked the little babies. They're, they're adorable. They're smart. They're also helpful. But guess what? The courts give her back her babies. She's earned it. Educated herself. Built herself a business. Reputable. Lives in a good community. Okay, she's not in the ghetto. These aren't ghetto kids. They lived well. However, her and her boyfriend and the twins are in the same house now. But something happened and it was the kids weren't in love with her. She got more love on the outside than on the inside. Now, as a family person, you have to always remember, you cannot be nicer to strangers than you are to your own family. So she's nice to the strangers. She's nice to her family. She's nice to her clients. Somehow, it wasn't working at home. The babies weren't loving her back. They weren't getting to know her. They were trying. 
they went to a session, a mental health session, to break down some of these things that are getting in the way of love and compassion, enjoyment, travel. Things a family, things she's been fantasizing about, fantasizing about doing with her babies, which are now 16. They're beautiful. What happens? They have a fight in the house. The, the twin says, well, um, it, 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 they had a, her and her boyfriend was arguing. They were trying to, they were keeping them awake and, you know, it was a little frustrating. They were tired and then they started arguing and the argument got out of hand and it turns into a fight, a fight, biting, hitting, knives drawn. And her mom was fighting back too. What was that Bible rule? Honor your mother and your father. What's the other one? That shall not kill. But guess what? They realized something happened. Dragged her into the bathroom. Nikki's still talking. Still talking. You're going to go to jail for this. It didn't help. But the twin says, they said that she was saying I, hateful things. That, they, that she doesn't like them. She, doesn't, she hates them. Not quite sure if I believe that, but that's what they said. But remember, you, there is a fight. And remember, I'm the one that is in the bathtub getting ready to die. So if I have to say I hate you, uh-huh, bite it, chew it, swallow it, okay. And they terminate her life. They prepare themselves, get themselves together, because now they miss the school bus and they got to go in. They get on, they, they get to school, you can see them on the school camera, what time they came in, because now the cops have a time stamp. So they thought, okay, we got to school, everything went cool. Nobody suspected a thing. They're on their way home now. The boyfriend arrives before them, calls the police. So they have to say, oh, this is terrible. My mother, my mother, how could this have happened? Mm-hmm. Everybody's interviewed, and they're, they're, you're, you're, they're in front of police officers, asking cute little nice questions. They're not under arrest, but they didn't say, um, we're not answering any questions. We don't answer questions. You have to tell cops, we don't answer questions. And then you have to, oh, let me get a lawyer. We don't answer questions. Because their job is to find the criminal. So they're talking, talking, and the police officers are putting things together, putting things together. They're later arrested for the murder of their mom. Because what do cops do? They put it together, put it together, especially in the state of Georgia. They're going to let you run wild until they catch you. Because you're thinking, oh, I'm good. Ain't nobody chasing me. Nobody you know is chasing you, but you, they got eyes on you. They know what you're doing. Georgia police is not like New York police. The Georgia police has more time on their hands to hunt, to observe, to, you know, investigate. New York, New York cops are a little bit different. You know, they're, um, they're a little bit different. These, they got a lot of time, you know, pulling people. They, we, listen, we haven't done anything. We don't have no time for you, okay? We haven't done anything. But they lay themselves back real slow, real slow, and then they start putting things together. Well, they put it together and they were arrested for the murder of their mom. Both girls. Not good. That's not the future she wanted for them. That's not the future a family wants. No, 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 no. What happens? They sit in jail for almost four years. They're 16, 20. They go, to, they go to court, they, look, we're guilty. They plead guilty. And the judge gives them 30 years. This happened when they're 16. They get 30 years. They'll be back out when they're, what, 46, 36? Let's take a look at my notes. Now, they were born in November 27, 1993. And so, 46 years. Oh, my goodness. But guess what? I'm going to give you an update. Grandmother's still praying for them. And they are educating themselves. They now have a high school diploma, a college diploma, 
And guess what? I think they're going to get that master's. They're going to get that doctorate. And when they come out at 46, they're probably going to have a cinematic movie to say, this is what happened. But almost the same thing like their mom. Wow, what could I have done different? What could the mental health team have done different? Because in one of their sessions, they tell her it will not go well. But guess what? I always say her. I'm not quite sure if it's a man or a woman that was part of the mental health team for the family counseling. But they missed it because what the team said, this is not going to go well. They were warned and they missed the signal. And this send the, the babies back to their mom. They have a fight. Listen, all parents say they have the rule. Okay, you're 16. They have the rule. You don't have the rule. When you are grown, you need to get going. What do you want to do? Sleep from bed to bed, from people's couch to people's couch? She was trying to give you something, something that you didn't know, something that you didn't have. She didn't want you jumping in um, early in a sexual experience like she did. She didn't want you, you know, um, putting away your education like, like she did, you know, partying excessively and then what? Miss the mark. She didn't want that. She wanted them to have the best. She put, she was planning it in her head, but the reality is it wasn't uh, the best. And she didn't feel love, and then they terminated her life. But the update is that they're doing their time. They've acknowledged what they've done. That's so good, so important. And now they're building their own life. So soon we're going to see them. They're beautiful, they're going to be beautiful women. Their grandmother is beautiful. Their great grandmother is beautiful. And guess what? Their mom is beautiful and they are beautiful. And life gives you a chance to turn it around. And I believe these two are going to turn it around. If you are in an awful situation and you need to turn something around before it gets ugly and you feel that feeling in your spirit that, oh, something's going to get ugly here, reach out for help. Get on the phone, even tell 911, you know what? I'm feeling like something horrible is going to happen if I don't walk out of this relationship. Or So someone can help you. Don't stay and try to figure it out. Oh, what the court said. Still reach out for help. You know, don't don't um, kill your baby, give your baby away, reach out for help. I no longer want to be a mom. Drop the kids off. Don't kill them. You know, whatever is going on, my husband, I'm, it's over for me. But kill? No. No. My girlfriend, no, I don't want her. No, no, no. No killing. Let people go and have their lives. Or call and see where the courts want to pick you. You may, They may never have been chosen to go back to to. Um, to grandmother's house, to great grandma, great grandmother's house, they may have put them somewhere else because they denied the, the great grandmother of having them again. She didn't get them, and then mommy got them. They didn't want to be with mommy. Call the police. Call whoever. I don't want to be with my mommy. Do not take me back. Period. Period. Find a way out. But definitely. Do not fight to the point that it gets ugly. Now, you know what the court system said? Now, of course, the Bible, I told you, it says, thou shalt not kill. That's Exodus 20, 13. But it also says to honor your mother and your father. That's Ephesians 6 and 12. Guess what the mental health team said? My PowerPoint's working. The, power, the, the health, mental health team said that it was a disrupted family structure that thrived on chaos. Oh, isn't that ugly? That is so ugly. Who's going to thrive on chaos? That doesn't make sense. Why would you say something ugly like that? But that's how they, they mm -hmm. down below in the description box, I have um, the live case for you to review. I like reviewing the live case. Because I want to be in that courtroom to see what happened. It's good to read the New York Times, Murderpedia, you know, the large magazines, Washington Post. Even the Rockdale um, paper had an article on them. But when you see it, you know, live and in, in front of the, you know, it, it makes a difference. It makes a difference. This is what else 
the, psychi the, the, the mental health team said. They said disruption in family structure can lead to several adverse events. Wow. Okay, so the family structure was disrupted. Now, we need families to be families. Man, woman, be families. Daddy, we need you in the house. We just, you know, I'm glad that she had her babies. I'm glad she, she didn't spit them out, didn't swallow them, didn't scrape them out with abortion, all that. But me, I think the mental health team failed. I did. Because the mental health is about psychiatrists, psychologists, sociology. Resolve the issue. Pay attention to the signs. This is not just an everyday job. These are people's lives. And, the, and you were warned. You didn't take it seriously. And now Nikki is gone. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Her friends, she's, she's someone that's going to be missed. Her, cl her clients miss her. Her friends miss her. Her mommy misses her. Nikki's mom misses her. And I think the, the, her children miss her too. But honey, when these two come out, it's going to be a cinematic. Watch them get a movie so they can tell their story to s prevent other people from going through what they went through. No one wants to lose their freedom. Never surrender your freedom. Never surrender your freedom. Now, um, I want to tell you that in the description box, it tells you what I'm wearing. It's called Coolie Bar, and Coolie Bar keeps you cool. It's like wearing an air conditioning, an air conditioner, and it also protects you from the sun. And they have clothing also that protects you from radiation. This particular unit has a hood, and it also has a mask that goes with it. Um, Dermablend makeup, of course, and let's see what else. Hmm. And the wig store that I buy from is also in the description box, and. A lot of what we talked about today is in the description box as well. We want to know what you would have done different if you find yourself arguing with family. Would a knife have come out? We want to know what could the girl have done differently? And what do you think they're going to be like when they come out? Because now they have outside education, inside education, and, co and edu educational degrees on their shoulder. And guess what? They're smart as a pi They're smart. They're extremely smart. These are smart girls. They're smart. Their mother was smart. Grandmother's smart. They were smart. I'm hoping that when they come out that their moms, their grandmother will be alive so they can say, I mean, I'm sure they've apologized to her already, but at least they have some part of their mom to hug and hold on to. Um, leave a comment. I want to thank you today for um, coming over to One Journey. Please leave a comment. Please like, subscribe, click that notification bell, and share the video. This is only our third video, so we're so excited to have you with us today. And thank you. Remember, One Journey, let's make it count, and together we thrive. Thank you for coming.